Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and in today's video we'll be covering the summary of the last lesson which is the first chapter in your Flamingo book and um, I have a document prepared in front of me and I'll be reading it out to you. So uh, the last lesson has been written by Alphonse Dordet uh, and for the brief introduction of the chapter um, Prussia was a powerful European empire and it consisted of Germany, Poland and some parts of Austria. Now, a war was going on between France and Prussia in 1871 and it lasted till 1872, in which France was defeated. So, two major districts of France, namely Alsace and Lorraine, uh, passed into the hands of Prussia. And the lesson actually describes how the Prussian, role, uh, Prussian rule affected the life of the people of Alsace. Actually, what happened was an order from Berlin, which is in Germany, was issued with, uh, which said that uh, the teaching of French language will now be banned in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. Instead, German language will now be taught. So this story describes the last day of one such French teacher, Mr. M. Hamill, he, and uh, he was transferred and he could no longer uh, stay there in his own sc old school, uh, which was his home for decades. So, still with the utmost devotion and sincerity as ever, he gave the last lesson to his students. And the story depicts the pathos on the whole about how people feel in not learning their native language and losing a wonderful teacher like M. Hamill. One of his students, Franz, came to the school late that day and uh, he was thinking that he would be punished because he had not learned his lesson on French participles, which was his homework. But he found Mr. M. Hamill had dressed in his Sunday clothes, you know, his special clothes. And all the old people of the village had also gathered there and he, they were sitting at the back of his class. And later he realized that it was due to the order that was issued from Berlin, which is on the bulletin board. So now for the detailed summary, uh, the narrator, who's Franz in this case. Now the f narrator's fears. What did Franz fear? Now, Franz was a young boy and one morning he was late for school. The teacher had asked the pupils to come prepared with the participles, with the lesson on participles. But Franz had not learned his lesson and uh, he was sure that his teacher, M. Hamill, would be very angry with him. So he was also afraid of the teacher's ruler. It was quite a fine day and for once Franz was so tempted, you know, to play and enjoy himself and in the open fields, but he could not dare to do so and he ran towards the school. So he was a responsible boy, but he was a naughty yet responsible boy. Now, town hall scene. On the way to his school, uh, while he was passing by the town hall, he saw a crowd of people in front of the bulletin board. This bulletin board had brought Alsace all the bad news over the past two years, you know, when the war was going on. Franz presumed that there must be some other ba bad news, but he did not stop to inquire and rushed on. The blacksmith who had read the news on the bulletin board, he told Franz not to hurry and slow down. He said that he had plenty of time. Uh, but Franz did not slow down and he thought that the blacksmith must just be, you know, poking him and making fun of him. Um, now, the unusual uh, atmosphere at school, when Franz reaches the school, so uh, he just wanted to reach his desk in his class unnoticed. He hoped that there would be no noise and, you know, he hoped that there would be no uh, noise and commotion as, us as usual. But what happened, uh, he depended on his noise and this bustle to reach to his desk unnoticed. But as soon as he reached there, he was surprised. Instead, what did he find? He found the school unusually quiet. The students were sitting quietly in their, respect, uh, in their respective seats and M. Hamill was not rapping his ruler on his table and he was simply moving up and down the room with his ruler under his arm. Now he lived quite uh, serious and quiet and uh, there was no chance for Franz to enter the room unseen now. Finally, he had to open the door and enter before everybody and unexpectedly, M. Hamill did not rebuke him. He spoke kindly to him and told him to go to his desk. Now, when Franz had settled down, he looked at M. Hamill and there was another surprise for him. What? M. Hamill had put on his beautiful green coat with frilled shirt and his embroidered black silk cap. And he wore these clothes only on special occasions. But 
it was no special day and franz could not understand why he was wearing such clothes his sunday clothes so um there was another surprise back benches of the class uh back benches were usually empty but that very day they were occupied by some village people now the former mayor the former post master old hoser with his three comered hat and some other village people were found sitting on those rare benches now m hamel climbed up his chair and spoke to the pupils in a gentle and serious tone and told him that an order had come from berlin and um french would not be taught any more instead german was going to be taught and the new teacher was expected to arrive the following day as such they were going to have their last lesson on french that day so today was the last very day that they will be taught the french language now franz understood what order was there on the bulletin board and why the blacksmith had told him not to hurry he now understood why m hamel had put on his best clothes why because it was going to be their last lesson in the french language the following day they will be taught german as franz got this news he felt truly sorry he was lost in his own thoughts and actually he had hardly learned to read and write and now he would have to stop forever because they're not going to learn french anymore he was sorry to have wasted his time he had always been enjoying himself outdoors and he had hated his books and always dreaded m hamel and his iron ruler but his attitude suddenly changed he felt his books were good companions he did not mind m hamel's ruler and his rebukes now he also understood why the people of the village were there they were also sorry that they had not been to school in any time at any time so now they had come to thank the teacher for his faithful st- service you know for decades um now m hamel of course did not scold franz he said that franz was not the only person to blame all of alsace had never been interested in learning they were in the habit of putting everything off till tomorrow and franz's parents wanted him to earn some money instead of going to school so he said that um they were strange frenchmen who could not uh, read or write their own language and he blamed himself too m hamel blamed himself too uh he said sometimes he gave the students a day off when uh, he wanted to go fishing so he was also casual at times now then mr hamel then praised his mother tongue he said that french was the most beautiful the most logical and the clearest language in the world he urged people to stick to it and he assured them that if they held fast to their language they would be able to get rid of the prussian rulers their language was a key to their freedom from freedom from slavery it was m hamel's last day at school but he had the courage and devotion to do his teaching work as usual and he taught the children grammar gave them writing exercises and also asked them to trace their fish hooks franz listened to his lesson very attentively that very day and he felt that uh, m hamel had never explained the lesson as clearly as he did that day or maybe it was franz who was actually listening very attentively to the lesson that day it appeared to him that as if he was he wanted to give his pupils all the all that he had to give now the school you know it was dismissed the church uh, clock struck 12 and it was time for the school to close and m hamel wanted to say something so but it was but he was overcome with the emotion uh, so he just wrote viva la france that means long live france on the blackboard and uh, with a wave of his hand he dismissed the school so to summarize it all again for you all just you know like a quick quick summary francis fear c france was late for school and he was afraid of uh, getting scolded by m hamel and he had not his uh, he had not learned his lesson on participle and he thinks of running away spending the day outside because it is as you know bright and warm as it could be and it had to be that day and birds were chirping and he was even tempted to watch uh, the drilling of the prussian soldiers you know but somehow he overcomes that temptation of his and he rushes to the uh, to the school on the way um, to the school he so uh, he sees the bulletin board and bulletin board is has been a source for of uh, bad news to all of the people of alsace and loren and um, there was a huge crowd in front of a uh, bulletin board and uh, 
uh, the blacksmith had also told him to slow down so he couldn't understand why but he was rushing to the school now when he reached the school the school uh, usual scene is uh, hustle bustle sounds of opening and closing of the desk repetition of lesson in unison striking of the teacher's ruler on the table but that day the unusual atmosphere of the school was everything was very silent m hamel was in his special sunday dress classmates were already in their places all settled surprising things in the classroom the villagers were sitting in the back um kindness of m hamel serious look of the school very serious very quiet village elderly, elderly people of course sitting in the back of the benches or the back benches then m hamel addressing the students you know they dem- he demands their full attention and as it is going to be their last lesson of french german will be taught in the schools of alsace and lorraine the following day starting the following day and uh, france feels very sorry for ignoring his lessons deeply pained at the thought of m hamel going away and uh, as a tribute to the teacher um for not having attended uh, school lessons and uh, as a mark of his uh, uh, you know as a mark of his 40 years of service his respect so the villagers had also gathered and they were sitting in the back of the bench now lack of learning hamel's view what P- parents were ignorant not they were not anxious to have their uh, children learn the children uh, prefer to be put at work on farms and mills and not uh, sent to school and he also blames himself for sending children on errands you know watering uh, watering his plants and whenever he would go fishing he would call off the classes and uh, the last lesson um, he calls the french language the most beautiful the most logical and uh, the most uh, clearest language and he gives them the lesson the grammar lesson and uh, he just wants to teach them everything he knows in one go and he gives a lesson in writing now students they were set to work very quiet uh, uh, you know quickly and pin drop silence that day and even beetles uh, failed to distra- uh, distract them and uh, mr hamel's dedication he served the school for 40 years and nothing had changed desks and benches had worn smooth walnut trees had grown taller and hop vine reached to the roof now um, he delivers his last lesson in history and everyone uh, in grammar and everyone just gets very emotional and church clock strikes 12 and uh, the school is dismissed trumpets of the prussian soldiers sound under the window and m hamel writes viva la france to dismiss the last class and leaves the school by making a gesture with his hand just waving so that is it for today's video um i hope you understood the last lesson very well so thank you so much for watching